Greetings, welcome to the Brain Gauge channel, and we're going to talk a little bit about alcohol, plasticity, and brain health. So, you know, see, what does, does drinking alcohol impact your brain health? And we've done a couple of little studies uh, that might be interesting to you. So, first, let's review the plasticity metrics that remain constant with age. This is really important. Uh, and, you know, if you haven't already seen this, then uh, if you've already seen it, then just fast forward. And if you uh, haven't, pay attention. So what we did in this study uh, and a lot of studies is that we collect both amplitude discrimination values. And that would be amplitude discrimination just focus right here. We're just asking which of two stimuli are larger and how good you are. Uh, the better you are, the smaller the number. So the smaller the difference, Lyman. And that number gets much, much smaller. When that number is small, your accuracy scores are good. And then we do a, what's called a single site adaptation study where we deliver an illusory conditioning stimulus. And that illusory conditioning stimulus makes this stimulus feel smaller. When this feels smaller, it's harder to tell the difference between these two. And so this number gets bigger. And when that number gets bigger, your plasticity score gets better. So they go in opposite directions. Bigger number here, bigger number, you know, better score on plasticity. Lower number here, better score on accuracy. All right, now, why am I showing you that? Let's go to a first outcome. First, simple, simplest one to understand is acute alcohol consumption. Uh, this is where you have a whole bunch of people sitting around drinking and you take their blood alcohol content and you know the cutoff seems to be 0 0.4. And uh, you know this is the amplitude discrimination number. It's pretty, pretty normal. And this is a single site adaptation number. So it's still pretty normal at that level. But as you drink more and more and more, the accuracy score, I mean, accuracy is going to get worse. Amplitude discrimination number gets bigger. The single site adaptation number gets smaller. And the real number you want to look at is the difference, the difference between these two. So that number is a lot smaller. It means your plasticity score is going to be smaller. So if you were to have a bunch of people sitting around drinking and testing on the brain gauge, those are the scores. The accuracy score would probably get a little worse, but the plasticity score would get a lot worse. Okay, so that's acute alcohol. That's really easy to understand, right? Um, now, let's see what recovery from alcohol use looks like. Again, we've got, you know, the constant numbers across different ages uh, on the left for reference. And then this is what it looks like. It control looks just like this on the left. Alcohol subjects before treatment. Not a big difference between the amplitude discrimination and the, ad the adapted stimulus. So that's very poor plasticity score. Now, these guys were all under a 12-week program. And so they tracked and tracked and tracked over 12 weeks. Uh, they started out sober. These are people who had been drinking quite a lot. Um, and and <clears throat> they drank quite a lot. And after 12 weeks of sobriety, look, this amplitude discrimination score getting down. So their accuracy score is getting better. But look at this. This is what's really interesting. Plasticity score, the adaptation score, way high. That difference is actually bigger than normal. So their plasticity is actually overcompensating. So that's kind of cool. So what happens with chronic alcohol use? And the reason this, the reason this happens is with chronic alcohol use, uh, one of the things that alcohol is, is a GABA agonist. And because uh, it mimics GABA, uh, alcoholics quit making GABA. So as soon as they're sober, they do, and GABA is required to do these tests. It's re required for amplitude discrimination, and it's required for that illusory conditioning to have an effect. And so with low GABA, they, they really don't have very much effect. And uh, or low GABA makes it really difficult for lateral inhibition and adaptation to take place. So these scores get much, much worse. But the interesting thing is the overcompensation that takes place um, because, you know, the, the brain starts producing more and more GABA. And so I guess it just gets on that. And then after a few weeks, it'll come back to normal. 
but after 12 weeks, it's uh, just on this roll of producing more and more. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting is that is the way that we swing from one uh, thing to another, from one state uh, of homeostasis to another. All right. So those are the easy ones. Now, drinking behavior does impact plasticity. So this study, we looked at 18 to 22 year olds, collect a whole bunch of measures on them. And uh, the main measure that was impacted was plasticity. Plasticity is a really sensitive measure and it's very related, you know, it's one of the, the uh, building blocks of basically a lot of things like learning and, uh, and, if, and learning and memory. And uh, one of the, what this study was, we looked at 18 to 22 year olds, they were tested while sober. Okay, so that's really important. Their BAC, their blood alcohol content, all measured zero. But what they the, there was they had they took a questionnaire about their drinking behavior. Now, institutional review boards being what they are, they gave us a bit of a hard time about questioning 18 to 21 year old or people under the drinking age about their drinking behavior. They thought we were encouraging drinking, which we were not. We were just asking them if they drank or not. And basically we just wanted to look at how much, what was their frequency of consumption? How much did they drink? Did they drink, you know, how many drinks per month? And uh, basically they drank anywhere from zero to 70, 80, 100 drinks per month. And so what we did was you block it off and uh, bend it up and basically this, the, the final number, the critical number seemed to be over 60 drinks per month. But look at it, this is threshold metrics. And if you've seen some of the other videos, you know, threshold metrics are just a measure of skin sensitivity. That's not affected by alcohol, not a big problem. Um, you know, the, it was kind of interesting when you, when you show some of the people in the alcohol community this data, I remember one guy who was very big in the alcohol uh, community, research community, he just, we showed him this plasticity data over here, I'll get to it in a minute, but he just, ah, bah humbug, uh, that's just peripheral neuropathy. Well, if you have peripheral, yes, if you are an alcoholic, long time, 20, 30 years, you will have peripheral neuropathy and alcohol will make these threshold scores much, much higher. And so your skin's, you know, basically the, you know, you won't be able to feel things. Your hands will be numb and your threshold scores or, or sensitivity will be pretty terrible. Uh, always interesting when you're breaking into a new field, you know, when people say bah humbug. Anyway, reaction time, really not a big change there. Again, that's just a pretty simple measure and it doesn't require a lot of processing. That's just a stimulus getting into in. And what that's showing is probably not a whole lot of myelin damage. I mean, these are still 18 to 22 year old kids. They're drinking a lot, but what do you see? Let's look over here at drinks of over, this is their plasticity score. So plasticity, looking at difference between amplitude discrimination and single site adaptation. And this is the normal difference is 25 to 30%. That's normal plasticity. You should have it get that much worse. But when they drank more than 60 drinks per month, they had significantly reduced plasticity. So that's really kind of interesting and it has a lot of implications, obviously, for people that age. Now, it would be also interesting to look at people, say, my age, you know, or, you know, would drinking that much uh, have this kind of impact on, uh, on anyone? And, you know, obviously, there's different tolerances and things like that, but where is your plasticity impacted versus drinking behavior? So anyway, it's, um, here's the, you know, from that, uh, if, if we look at uh, the results and put those results into the brain gauge score format, uh, the controls looked all normal. And the heavy drinkers, so the drinkers who drank more than 60 drinks per month, the main score that was impacted was their plasticity score. So that was, that's a thing to look for if you're looking at brain gauge scores. 
And if you suspect someone is drinking heavily and maybe that's what's really impacting them. Anyway, thank you for watching. That was just a, another quick video we wanted to put up and let you know uh, what our findings were uh, on alcohol studies using uh, the brain gauge. And uh, have a great day.